Hi! I'm Sophronia. I'm looking forward to getting to know you. Thanks for coming by. Come on in. Welcome everyone, I am Sophronia Scott, the author of Unforgivable Love, and welcome to my kitchen here in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. I'm looking forward to getting to know you better and to telling you a few things about me. Well, the first thing you need to know is that I did not grow up in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. I grew up in Lorraine, Ohio, which you may recognize as the hometown of Toni Morrison and I admire Toni Morrison to the ends of the earth, so I'm, I'm hoping you will feel that same uh, warmth and energy when you read this book. You know, I grew up in a home where my father didn't even know how to read, so even though I was writing ever since I was a little girl, I had no concept of writing as a vocation. So I went to Harvard where I was studying pre-med and was kind of really unhappy. Organic chemistry is a very bad thing. <laughs> But um, I was still writing and taking writing classes. And one of my teachers, uh, Carl Nagin, said to me one day, what are you doing? Don't you realize you're good enough to get paid for this? And that was a shock to me. That was a huge shock. And he changed my life. You know, he introduced me uh, to a, a particular opportunity at Time Magazine. And I was hired out of college. I went to work as a reporter researcher at Time Magazine. After that, I eventually went on to People Magazine, and that was fun. Okay, I have to say that that didn't even feel like work. While I was still at People, I kind of fell in with a group of actors who became very close friends, and they sparked my creativity, and I decided I wanted to uh, try my hand at writing fiction again, which I had not done since college. And that led me to write my first novel, which is called All I Need to Get By. And uh, I actually had that, that book came out and I had my son the same time, pretty much. So life was pretty crazy for me uh, after that. But, um, and it took me a while to come back to writing fiction again, which uh, resulted in unforgivable love. I had a fascination with the movie Dangerous Liaisons. The, the version that I saw, that I first saw, had Glenn Close, John Malkovich, and Michelle Pfeiffer. I saw it you know, many years ago when it first came out. And that story never left my head. And I was uh, taking a walk with my friend Jenny Lumet, uh, the screenwriter, and I was telling her about uh, how I seemed to be obsessed with this story. And she just casually said off the top of her head, there needs to be a version of that story with black people in it. And my head just practically exploded. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, and I know what it would be. It would be in Harlem, and it would be really glamorous, and it would be in the 1940s. And suddenly it was just, you know, I knew I could do it. I knew I could do it. Um, interesting point though, I wrote it as a screenplay first because I had the movies in my head. So I wrote it as a screenplay. Um, my friend Leslie Lewis uh, even helped me get readings for that screenplay. We had it read by actors in both Los Angeles and New York, uh, tried to get some interest in the screenplay and that never happened. So my agent recommended that I write the novel and that it would be um, easier to think about a film if there was a novel. And I was actually really happy with that idea because a screenplay by its very form is short. It's really short and you can't go into a lot of detail because you have to leave room for the director and the actors to fill in their version of it. So for me to do the novel, put it back in my realm where I could really fulfill the whole vision I had for this book. I was having a talk with my friend Jane Brady, who lives just down the street from me, and she said to me, Sophronia, I read your first novel, and I just feel as though you are all about redemption. You don't throw people away. Forgiveness was a big thing in my life. You know, I, I grew up with a, a pretty tough father, and my life is different today because I forgave him. And I have to say, that changed my life opened up my life to, to let go of a huge amount of heavy baggage. And that keeps coming up in my writing, I think. Like forgiveness, redemption, because I know how valuable it is. I know how it can change a life. So that, that's, that's huge for me. So yeah, and yeah, I guess that's why I believe you don't throw people away, because you don't know. You don't know what is there in terms of, of love and activity and, and, I don't know, faith. 
and, and that can be there for you. And if you throw people away, you throw it away for yourself. It's funny how people think about overnight success when to me it's been like five years to get here. Uh, but at the same time, you know, and this is why I like talking about the, the commitment aspect so that people can see, well, uh, they think overnight success is something that they can't do. But commitment is something that you can do. So I was in graduate school when I started writing Unforgivable Love. I entered a program uh, called at Vermont College of Fine Arts, and it's called a low residency program, which means I only had to go to Montpelier, Vermont every six months. Now, this was a big thing for me to do, to, to suddenly um, make this commitment to improve my writing, and I had to make some financial sacrifices as well. So in order to help support my family while I was in graduate school, I actually learned how to drive a school bus. And I became a substitute school bus driver uh, for, for over a year while I was working on this book. And I would get my son up, he was then about eight, I would get him up like five in the morning so that we could be together at the bus depot at six and I would do the bus runs, first the high school, then the intermediate school, and then, um, then it would be time for him to go to school, and I would either drive him on the bus to school with the other kids, or I had to go find a bus um, that was going to his school to put him on. So that was, a pretty, <laughs> that was a pretty tiring time, but it was worth it. You know, people, I've, I've heard people say, well, gosh, that was a lot, no, uh, that, isn't that too much? And I would say, well, it's my dream, right? And if something is important to you, this is what commitment looks like. You, you do what you never thought you'd do. You um, take on experiences that are really hard, and yet it, it pays off. It really does pay off. And I like to think that this book is the result of a lot of commitment. I'm not alone, though, when I do this work, because I have a writing buddy. But David lives in Colorado. So what we do is we get on Google Hangout um, three to four times a week and we say hello, say what are you working on today, um, he's working on a new novel, I'm working on a new novel, and then we get to work. And so we are just on the screen typing away. It's like sharing an office except you know he's in Colorado and I'm here in Connecticut. Gosh, I forget which um, teacher once said this, but um, the phrase isolation is a dream killer, you know, if you are by yourself, um, thinking about doing something. Uh, it's one thing, but it's a lot easier to succeed in a dream when you're working that dream with others and talking about it with others. It keeps the dream alive. Okay, I'm going to spill the tea on the fact that I am a huge football fan. And I mean NFL, professional football. I go to church on Sundays, and then I'm home, and I'm all about the football. You know, I love the energy of the tea. I've watched your selection shows and I love how they, they all say, you have one minute to pitch the book. It's been so great having you in my home. Thank you for being here and getting to know me. I am Sophronia Scott, author of Unforgivable Love, and I have just joined the tea. Hey, thanks for coming by. It was fun spilling some tea with you. I'll see you next time. Bye.